Hi, this is Carrie from Tone Wars. We're gonna go live in just a few minutes, but before we do, I just wanted to take a few seconds to say a few things. Jared and I really appreciate when you guys tune in and interact with us when we go live. We work very hard to make sure that our live streams and our produced videos are educational and entertaining for everyone. Believe it or not, there's a lot of work that goes into our live streams and our produced videos. So if you like what you're experiencing here, here's a couple ways you can help us out. The Super Chat feature is turned on and any amount will be appreciated. Jared is also available for private consultation for a nominal fee. You can contact Jared through two of the links below. One is through our Tone Wars Facebook page and the other is through email. So thank you so much for your support. The live stream's about ready to start, so go pour yourself your favorite glass of whiskey or other libation and we'll be right with you. Cheers. Welcome to Tone Wars. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me tonight. I was going to start out with playing a bunch of stuff right away, but uh, I'm going to wait till it fills up a little bit so people don't miss out on, uh, on hearing this thing and all the mixes that I got planned for you guys tonight. Um... Let me jump in and say hello to some people, and we'll we'll have a you know little discussion about this guy, um, and uh, we'll get started in a few minutes with the uh, the mixes. I do have new mixes coming very soon. I got one uh, done the other day, and now I gotta I gotta practice it so I don't screw it up live. <laughs> it's a pretty hard song to play, um, so I do have that coming. And uh, tonight I have uh, a couple of new mixes for you guys from some of the songs of my band Anastasi, what I did is I just kind of did like a remix. You know, I um, kind of edited the songs down so that uh, maybe there's like a verse, chorus, and a solo, and like maybe a chorus after that. So uh, so you can hear it with vocals, keyboards, you know, bass, drums, everything. Uh, so I got a couple of those that I'm going to do, and then the regulars as well. And then we'll go ahead and go through this and turn all the knobs and talk about what it does and what we like about it, what we, I don't know, there's not really much I don't like about it. It's actually a really cool amp. Um, so we'll just discuss everything angle tonight. And then, like, um, because everybody always asks, I put this in the title, we'll see how it compares to the MT-15, because a lot of people ask me that after every, every time I do a video, no matter what the amp is, everybody asks me afterwards. And I, and I don't mind, actually, it's kind of cool. People always ask me, like, well, how does it compare to the MT-15? Well, tonight I'm actually going to do a comparison for you. Just at the end of the video, I'll, I'll play, I'll unhook this guy and go through this guy, and we'll just hear it in, in a couple mixes as well. And we'll just talk about the differences that you guys hear and the differences that I hear and feel while I'm here. Um, also, I also wanted to give a, a quick shout out to Motor City Guitar. If it wasn't for Motor City Guitar, I would not be able to do these things. Uh, because they let me take this stuff home and borrow it for these episodes. Uh, if you haven't shopped at Motor City Guitar, please do. There's a link below to Motor City Guitar, and they have lots of great deals on stuff. Actually, they have two of these on closeout right now, so they're discounted, and you can get a really good deal on these right now. So I would suggest getting them if you like what you hear tonight. Um, so they ship all over the U.S., so if you don't live near uh, Motor City but you want to buy something from them anyways... Feel free to buy from them via their website, and they'll ship it to you. So, great store, great people that work there. So, I highly recommend them, and I really appreciate them uh, letting me do this so that we can all enjoy these episodes. Um, also, uh, I thought of something really cool. I'm going to make a little uh, video clip about this, so I don't have to do this every time. Um, but I use these KS, KZAS 10s, KZAS 10 in your monitors. Um, and I thought that would be so cool if you guys can experience the exact same thing that I'm experiencing while I'm sitting here. So when I'm live with you guys, I'm actually listening to everything through these. There are five drivers per side, so 10 driver total. They're about 70 bucks, right around there. And there's links below to them. Uh, and if you want to experience the same thing that I am, we can all experience it together and, you know, if you're listening to it on your phone or your mobile device, your, uh, you know, your iPad or whatever, um, 
the nice thing about using these is that you could plug in and use these uh, to listen to everything that we're hearing tonight. And so when I talk about like what I'm experiencing, like how it sounds and all that kind of stuff, you guys are hearing the exact same thing that I'm hearing. So we can all share that experience together and be all on the same page. And it's a very inexpensive way to do it because as we know, when you watch something through an iPad or your phone, the speaker on the phone, it really doesn't do anything justice. It all sounds the same through there. You're not getting the punch and the dynamics uh, or anything like that. So it's really hard to differentiate from one sound to another. And it just, it frankly sounds like crap. So um, if you click on the links below, um, you can, it'll take you to our, uh, one of my Amazon affiliate links. And um, yes, I do get about three bucks when you buy a pair. <laughs> so it's not a big deal, but it doesn't cost you any extra. They just send me a little commission, but that's not really why I'm doing it. I don't need $3 that bad. I'm doing it because I thought of it today. I was like, wouldn't that be a cool thing um, if you can experience the same thing I am, again, we're all on the same page listening to the same stuff and you could really hear like what I'm hearing and we could all, like I said, we're in the same room together at that point, you know, all on the same page and these things sound amazing. They're really good. And I know it's like, you know, 60 some dollars, how good can they be? They're awesome, you know, and what's cool about them is that you can use them for your own, you know, if you're in a band and you need in your monitors, now you're done, you got them. And uh, they're great for listening to music and all that stuff while you're working or working out. They work really well. Make sure you get the foam tips too when you get them because the tips they come with are silicone. They'll, they'll squirt right out of your ears. They don't stay in really well. And they don't create that really nice seal where you get grid base, uh, a lot of bass response. So get the tips as well and they'll last you a long time. You just pop them on and squeeze them, stick them in your ear and they, they're not coming out. I mean, they're stuck in there really well. So... Um, so yeah, get, get a pair of those and uh, if you want, you know, no pressure obviously, but if you want to experience the same thing I am, uh, I think it's a really fun way to do it. Uh, very inexpensive way to do it as well. Um, cheers to everybody. Drinking some Bullet whiskey tonight, some uh, bourbon whiskey from Bullet. I had a long day yesterday washing trucks in the cold, so kind of going to take it easy tonight. Um, See, we got 14 people here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let's see, say hi to some people. Jason Taylor, what's going on, man? Warm Chord Music, what's up, Jay? Um, Mark Bowers, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, Tony Yayo, hola. Hey, hola. <laughs> what's going on, man? I pronounced the H. I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, uh, here we go with the sleeves again. Yeah, I know. It's I'm sleeving it tonight, you know. It's, uh, it's laundry day. <laughs> um, and I'm getting a phone call. Uh, let me turn that off. Um, Gravel Rocks, what's going on, buddy? Glad to see you. Steve from the Gravel Rocks, what's going on, man? How you doing? Um, uh, Griffin GTR, hello, Tone Dude. <laughs> what's going on, man? Um, ben Burnett, word up. Good to see you here, man. Yeah, I missed you last week. Uh, good to see you're here. Um, Dave Buckner, uh, also curious how it is versus that Savage module you have for the Synergy. You know, uh, I was talking to Carrie, uh, and shout out to Carrie, I know you're watching. Um, I was talking to her today, I was like, man, maybe I should have set up the Savage module, but I just ran out of time today setting all this stuff up and, and sound checking. But that is a great, uh, I like that comment, and I wish I could have done that for you guys tonight. Um, but maybe I'll, uh, post something, you know, maybe I'll post before I bring this guy back. Maybe I'll post a video or a quick, quick clip or something. I'll see what I can do for you guys. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Would this monitoring system be a way for you to rehearse remotely with your band? Um, you mean the in-ears? We, we use in-ears when we, when we play, so we, this is what we use. Actually, what I'm streaming through right now is our in-ear monitor system. You know, it's just sending a direct out to you guys uh, via my interface I'm, uh, on my desk over there. So yeah, we, we do this all the time. In fact, if you watch that brewery video, that's how we did it. We streamed through our in-ear monitor system through an iPad, through an iRig Pro Duo, so that was kind of fun. Um, Sean Christopher, what's going on, man? Thanks for being here. 
Uh, wait, what angle amp is that again? This is the Fireball 100. That's what this is. And I uh, had a lot of fun dialing this guy in. This has been a... Uh, it's, it's a little different than the other ones out there, so it was pretty fun getting to know it. Um, Aaron Lucas, what's going on, man? Hope all is well. Yes, I uh, hope it's treating you well, too. J-Rod Thompson, what's up? All right, so you guys are probably, you want to hear a few riffs, all my typical stupid riffs that I play. I'll play a couple riffs for you just to get my hands warmed up a bit, and we'll get started with some mixes. And... Uh, you know, so just give me a second here and me mute the mic. Holy crap, what a beast. Yeah, this thing is uh, pretty crazy. I mean, if you want an amp, I'm just uh, adjusting my... I got my wireless pack behind me here, adjusting my volume. If you want something that really pushes a lot of very interesting and unique frequencies, uh, <laughs> this is your baby. I mean, this is very different than all the other amps that I've had down here. It's very unique. Um, turn the fan off. Uh, so, I'll show you also... Let's go over the, the loop. It's got a, a effects or a, um, a noise gate on the back. Listen to that. It takes all the hiss out. I just turned the noise gate off. And I just turned it up just enough to turn off the hiss. That's a, that's a really cool feature. Um, this thing sounds really good. It's got a great feel to it. Um, and I love the noise gate feature. Uh, it really does uh, add a lot of uh, value to the amp because we all hate that hiss that they all make. And it's a pretty noisy amp, you know, uh, except for the, the noise gate, right? I mean, that turns off all that crappy hiss, and it really does make a big difference. So I like that feature a lot. That's something I noticed right away about it. Um, it has a mid-push. It also has... Uh, a bright switch and a bottom end. It, it gives you more bottom end uh, by putting in the switch there. And uh, it's also got indicator lights here. So if you have a tube going bad, the indicator light will come on and tell you. Kind of like idiot lights in your car. It'll tell you that the tubes are bad. Um, and it's got a clean channel and a high gain channel. And um, right now I have the gain set at just over 11 o'clock. Just hair over. And that kind of, you know, takes care of rhythm and lead for me. And I'm pushing it with a precision drive by Horizon Devices, like I push every amp. I'll show you what it sounds like with and without it. And um, just so you know, special note too on this amp, this is how unique this amp is. On the precision drive, typically I have the tight knob two notches up on every amp that I use. Well, most of the amps that I use down here. Um, but on this guy, I actually have it just one notch up. Because with this one, it, it's, it doesn't have as much low end as some of the amps out there. It has a big sound, but it's not as, as flubby. So you don't need to tighten it up so much. So... Um, I found that when I when I turned the tight knob up to two notches, it sounded really good, but it was choking it a little too much. And when I turned it back down one notch, it gave it that fullness. And um, that's kind of the sweet spot on it. And I got the gain at like 7 o'clock. 6 o'clock is pretty much all the way off. I just have it nudged. You know why? Because I paid for it, so I'm going to use it. Um, the volume is at like 1 o'clock, and the tone is at... Uh, in between 11 and 12 o'clock, I, I knocked it down a little bit because it's pretty kind of it's kind of a bright amp, you know, but it, it sounds really good. Obviously, I mean you guys just heard it. So um, let me uh, 
see how many people we got here. And what's up, John Claude? Um, what are you hoping to see from Nam? He says, "Oh gosh, I'm hoping to see, um, I'm hoping to see uh, Line Six come out with a Helix too. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna or not, but that would be kind of cool if they did. I'm hoping to see Kemper follow through with their uh, three-year tease that they did on us about the Kemper cabs. So that'd be nice to see that." And I want to see this guy's big brother. I want to see the MT-100. And when that comes to Motor City Guitar, you better bet your rear ends that it'll be on this show. I will have it on the show. So those are the, the three big things that I want to see. Um, you know, everything else is like, I mean, uh, yeah, the I think uh, Fryette is releasing some new amps. And um, uh, I think Omega is as well. So I, uh, I want to see that. I mean, there's so many things I want to see. So, um, well, I'll have Omega on here very soon. So um, that's another one I'm really looking forward to doing. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to see it all. I mean, I, I'm going to be keeping track of NAM, and anytime any big updates come, I will try to go live or at least do a video about it so that you guys can be kept up to date with that stuff. Um, so I got tomorrow off, so I'm just going to kind of watch YouTube all day and just collect information for you guys. Since I can't go... I'll just do my best to report from here. <laughs> um, Return to Coda. Just got here. What did I miss? Actually, you just missed a couple riffs, dude. Thanks for coming. And I haven't started the mixes yet. And this is why. Because I want to kind of make sure everybody's got notifications. And the room's going to fill up a little bit. And then I can start with the mixes. And I will do that shortly. Um, Dave Buckner. Very unique, punchy feel to that amp. Doesn't need a boost, but of course you can use one if you'd like. Warm Card Music says, I want that Fryat Synergy mod. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, you know what? Um, it depends on the kind of music you play. Like, uh, I find that just about every amp out there, at least for me and the way I play and the style of playing that I do and using doing solos and stuff like that, I find that just to my taste, I like to have a boost. Um, I adjust the boost differently per amp because I don't want it to be this overly saturated, screechy mess. So I just give it enough to give me um, that feel, that chewiness that I'm looking for, and that punch. And once I get that, um, I, I push it as hard as I can until it starts getting kind of messy. And then I pull it back right to where it's like that sweet spot where everything works really well. So it depends. Like there's guys that just play rhythm and they just kind of ride chords out. And they do um, stuff like that, and they're like, I don't need a boost. And I get that, because they're not doing chunky riffs and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it all depends on your style of playing, you know. Um, I kind of always equate it to, like, a vehicle. Like, um, you know, if you drive uh, in a way that you corner fast and you do a lot of drifting, I mean, you're going to have a completely different suspension system in your car than somebody who just uses it for a daily driver. So that's kind of how I look at it. And both are great. Both styles of driving, both styles of playing are great. It just it depends on what you're doing and, you know, what you're going to need with it. But I will say that this amp is very aggressive even without the overdrive. I just gave it a push, you know, just a nudge to kind of fit my suit my taste in my playing. So that's pretty much what I did. Um, all right, well, we got 20 people here. Um, let's see, Gravel Rocks, the Rev G20. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, that will be on the show as well after NAM, so I'm definitely going to have that on. Okay, so let's let's get started with like a typical kind of you know thing that I do here. Let's do a couple on the red guitar. This is tuned to uh, B standard, um, and what you're hearing it through is a Mesa 212 with vintage 30s, and it's mic'd with a Sennheiser E609. So it's pretty pretty basic, straightforward setup. And then after this, I'm going to do some stuff with a guitar, a six-string guitar that's tuned down to uh, uh, C-sharp standard. And then I'll do some stuff on another guitar that's uh, dropped way down. Um, and uh, we'll just kind of discuss after that. So, um, and then we're going to do some stuff through this guy towards the end of the video. All right, so let me find, there's the old standard there. All right, let me mute the mic and we will get started.
Okay. So there's the two kind of standard ones that I try stuff out with. They're kind of chunky and slammy, and they got like, uh, you know, one's got a solo in it and stuff, and it just gives me a chance to uh, to feel the support that it has or doesn't have, um, the tone between the leads and the rhythms to see if like the leads are too bright or too brash, um, if there's great sustain, um, and if I have like that, that sweet, juicy kind of lead tone that I like, um, how well it takes to effects, um, all that stuff, and how well it stands in a mix, like can you hear all the pick attack, can you hear all the little different things that I'm doing, and um, the dynamics, and yeah, it sounds great as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm listening to it on these, you know, um, and I, I do watch these shows back to make sure that everything's mixed properly, um, to see if I can improve on the next one, and so far everything's been mixed really well on here. Um, so what do you guys think how this sounds? You guys liking it? Um, Helix Cabana Boy. <laughs> What's up, man? Sounds metal. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Tony says, I want to have the radio down under for the MI Audio Gamma 120 and the 80. You guys um, heard that beast yet? I haven't heard that one yet. Um see here what a beast he says uh, how is it different from the others you've demoed Tony asks um, is it bright should it be great for returned right sounds great Mark Brower says thank you um, it, it's it's different because it has a different gain structure um, it's it's uh, it's a little tighter than some of the amps that I've had down here, um, but I still need to push it for what I do. Um, the thing is with, with the Ingalls is they got their own thing. They, they have their own character. The gain structure on them is way different. I mean, I'm at, you know, you could do rhythms on this no problem at 10 o'clock, you know. Um, we'll go through all that. I'll actually dial, you know, dial things uh, back and forth and up and down and all that stuff for you guys later. Um and the thing, uh, Dave Seymour, a friend of mine who has this exact amp, um, I was talking to him about it, and it's got the mid push, um, which is great because he's like, if you have another guitar player show up to practice, and you know you want to stand out in the mix without being too loud, that button really helps you stand out in the mix. I mean, it just gives you that nice hump where you where you just stand out, but not in an annoying way because it's smooth, and it gives you that nice smooth kind of nudge in the mix so that that's kind of a cool feature um so yeah i mean it, it's definitely um like i said they they got their own thing going on i would say the gain on this is very staticky and i mean that in in a complimentary way there's a lot of electricity around it there's a lot of like really good like there's like frequencies just jumping out everywhere and it's it's not it's not a very even keeled frequency amp it's it's pretty angry it's got a lot of rage to it and um and it's it's a savage beast is what it is and it's got a big sound um i've seen dave seymour in his band play um his band is uh dead and five and it sounds amazing on stage i mean through the pa system i mean it's just got this huge huge scary tone to it and it sounds really good and if you know how to and a lot of times it really what it is what it comes down to is it doesn't match the riffs that you play can you wield that tone and that gain that it has and that rage that it has in a way where it, it works with you instead of against you and depending on the kind of music you play this thing um, and, and it's very versatile but i think that the heavier the better you know if you're going to be a pretty heavy guitar player on uh, in a band that plays some pretty you know uh pretty heavy kind of ragey stuff this would be really good for you it just it has the balls that you need you know it really does. So I hope that answers your question. Um, we'll get on to some more stuff in a minute. Uh, Dave Seymour, good timing. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Yeah, good to see you here. Um, let's see here. So, all right, so let's do this. I'm going to play some riffs without the overdrive right now. I'm going to turn it off, play some riffs without it. And then I'll go ahead and click it on. When you see my foot go up here, you know I'm clicking it on. And you probably should hear the difference. So here we go. Thank you. 
Wow, yeah, I hope you heard with the harmonics when I was going up and down the strings like that. You can hear the harmonics ping much better with the overdrive, and that's not a slight to the amp. All amps will do that. I mean, when you have an overdrive on, that's why I use it, because I want all those accents and those dynamics to, to stand out more. You know, without an overdrive on any amp, it's going to be a little duller. It's going to be a less less dynamic without it but when you put the overdrive on you're not adding gain you're just adding push you're you're pushing the amp harder and making it work harder so like all the stuff that you're doing just stands out a little better that's all it is you know i mean i don't use the, the a common misconception with overdrives is like oh i don't need all that gain well i'm, I'm not using gain i'm just using volume i'm just shoving the front end of this amp harder and making it work harder yeah there's probably like a microscopic amount of gain on it but again I use it arbitrarily because <laughs> I paid for it I'm putting it on there but it's like very very little so uh, but yeah that, I think that it's a very responsive amp sounds great it sounds good without the overdrive which is awesome and it's pretty responsive I mean it's definitely more responsive than a Mesa so if you took like a Mesa dual rack and uh, turn off the overdrive it's muddy gooey it's flubby it's very unresponsive it's kind of dead and you have to push those amps hard with an overdrive. And when you do, they sound amazing. But um, this doesn't need it as much. But it still needs it, in my opinion, for what I do. So I hope that uh, helps you with, uh, with that uh, part of it. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix Rising loves me some overdrive. Yeah, dude. My overdrive's always on. You know, I bypass it for the clean channel. But I always have an overdrive on. There's people out there that, oh, I don't need it. And, and it's like, well, I've had people over my house that say, I don't need an overdrive. And then I plug them into one of my amps and stuff. And I, and I just say, just play. And it's off. And then I turn it on. And then all of a sudden, they're like, wow. you know And then they're realizing how great everything sounds and feels. Then I turn it back off. And then they're like, oh, my God, turn it back on. I'm like, well, you want an overdrive then. You know, I mean, because it... It, it, it just it just makes everything sound and feel better. So I would always recommend an overdrive. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. Let me back up here. Uh, just got here. What did I miss? Phoenix Rise 1 said, You missed out uh, two mixes, but I'll, I'll be doing uh, several mixes for you tonight. So don't worry. I'll, I'll get to those in a minute here. Um... Yes, can you wield that tone? <laughs> Thank you. My favorite phrase of the day. Yes, you have to wield the power of the amp that you're playing. You have to know what this amp does. And I'll tell you, I, you know, Dave, I, Dave Seymour, I should have had you on tonight. I, I know you're probably really busy, but man, you ever want to hear a guy work in Engel, go watch Dead and Five play, get their album. Because um, I'm telling you, the, I can't... I. What I'm doing with this amp tonight pales in comparison to what Dave Seymour does with it because he just, he's got that style that really works really well with this type of gain and this type of, these frequencies. I mean, he just does a lot of cool stuff that utilizes all the things that Ingalls do. So I don't think you pick your amp. I think your amp picks you, you know, and um, 
you know, uh, when it comes to Seymour, I mean, the amp chose wisely because he really knows how to work that thing. Um, and it, and it sounds amazing when he plays through it, very aggressive. And it's got all this cool, you, you know, what these amps really like is when you, when you kind of pick and, and hit these bottom strings and you bar them really heavy, they got that chunky kind of stuff that they do. And, uh, the strings just sound amazing and it, it really responds. Let me, let me do a couple riffs for you on that. This to show you. There's a thickness there that's, that's just very thick and aggressive and uh, and punchy, and I really like that. And Dave does a lot of that stuff, so it really stands out in their and and what they do, especially when he's on stage. These are great live amps because there's so much stuff coming out of them, lots of frequencies and lots of electricity and and crazy uh, stuff going on. Um, it's not very refined, and I mean that as a compliment. And what you need on stage in a in a mix where you got this huge room. And you got drums and vocals and bass and maybe even another guitar player, or keyboard player or whatever going on. You got a crowd soaking it all up. Um, this amp puts out so much energy that it's got enough left over to really stand out in a mix, but in a good way. You can hear all the little things, the idiosyncrasies in your playing. You can hear everything really well. Um, which for me is a little scary because if I screw up, <laughs> you guys will probably hear it better than, uh, you know, on other amps. So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very electric amp. There's a lot of like, you know, just, just stuff coming out of it. And it's just really unruly and, and crazy. So you, you really have to know how to wield the power of this thing and take advantage of it. You know, it's funny is I meet some people and they play through uh, <coughs> certain aggressive amps. They're like, oh, that's too much for me. And to me, it's like, just learn how to ride the lightning, man. Learn how to use that and harness it and really, uh, you know, wield it and use it for your, your uh, you know, for your songs and your music and stuff. And like, ride those notes out and get that vibrato going and just, you know, use all that attack and that bite and that electricity coming out of this thing. And you're going to find that you become a better player because... You know, I mean, if you can go faster, you're going to have to learn how to drive better. But it, there's there's a payoff to that because now you can go faster and do more cool stuff, you know. And that's kind of what the sample allow you to do. So it's got, I mean, the gain, you know, I'm at, like I said, I'm just over 11 o'clock. Just a hair over and it's just amazing. So, yeah, so let me uh, get back to the comments here and then I'll do some more stuff. Uh, Dave Seymour, I wanted one for years, tried chasing that tone through the Randall MTS stuff, but it never came close. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, this is, this is, it's, it's got its own thing going on. So if you really want to sound like, you know, different than everybody else, get an angle because they, they are definitely, they're, they're like the black sheep of the family when it comes to amps. They're just so unique, you know, and they do some crazy stuff. So I would, uh, uh, J Dave says, thank you so much. Yeah, hey, man, seriously, dude, you rule. You're a great guitar player. Your band's awesome. I, I enjoy watching you guys live, and I'm always, like, in awe of how great you sound on stage. It's always, like, <laughs> just amazing. It's so thick and fat and aggressive. So, yeah, you guys are a good pair. Don't ever sell your amp, bro. <laughs> uh, Phoenix Rise says, it just gives me the right feel to the amp, I have a PRS MT15, and yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, let's see here. Sounds killer. Warm chord says. Um, let's see. Yeah, warm chord says uh, for what you do, it makes sense to use the overdrive. Uh, for me, not so much. Yeah, it's everybody's different. You know, it all depends. You know, um, and. Uh, Sounds killer either way. Yeah, it does. It's got great tone by itself. It's not dull. It's still got a lot of great stuff going on with it without the overdrive. Um, 
Sounds great with no overdrive, Sean Christopher says, but the overdrive adds a lot of killer sound, sounding richness and attack. Yeah, exactly. And see, I play like that. I play with a lot of attack and a lot of, uh, you know, riffy, tight, kind of chuggy things. So that overdrive just really brings that out. And in a mix, it makes a huge difference because when you're chunking on a string and, uh, you know, accenting things, uh, and the kick drum's following you, and you got other stuff going on, like bass, guitar, and maybe vocals or keys or whatever, the overdrives helps all that stuff stick out in the mix more. And if you do a mix, like if you want to experiment, if you have a recording, you know, a little bit of recording software, you can try that at home and record without an overdrive, the same part of the song, and then record with, and you'll find immediately, like, I'm using an overdrive from now on, because all your accents stick out way more. So I would always recommend an overdrive um okay so dave seymour you never screw up <laughs> you just jinx me bro <laughs> yeah because i'm gonna <laughs> um he uses demario demarzio tone zones in a couple of guitars the heavy mid-range uh and el nico v works well with that amp yeah yeah because your tone's amazing with it so um, that is thick, great tone and playing. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, how much... Oh, Dave Buckner. How much use has your Kemper been getting since you've been trying out all these great high-gain tube amps? Uh, great question. I actually had it upstairs. Um, I was playing through it just the other day, and it sound, I still think it sounds amazing. You know, as, uh, on that note, like I, I am, I have a lot of tube amps uh, over here uh, that I've bought, like this one. And um, I don't know if you guys noticed the KSR back there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike from Mike Hasty, left that here uh, for me to babysit while he's going out of town. I'll take good care of it, Mike. <laughs> he's in Walls of Jericho. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, have a lot of great stuff here, and I still love the Kemper. I will say that ever since I got my Sin 5050, um, I prefer the Kemper through that and Real Cabs far more than I preferred it through Direct um, and using the cab sims in it. Whether it's through Friedman's uh, or Studio Monitors or whatever, I still prefer the Kemper through a real tube amp, which is the Sin 5050, and real Mesa cabs. It just sounds way better. Better clarity, better feel. Um, it's night and day difference, and uh, once I heard that, I'll never go back. So... Uh, but yeah, I still love it. I still think it's amazing. I use it for a writing tool and for practice upstairs all the time. So, And I'll be doing episodes about that because I'm going to be reviewing some uh, Kemper profiles soon on here. Um, so let's, uh, let me switch guitars here. Um, let's see here. All right, so let me switch guitars. I'm going to do another mix for you guys. Um, make sure my volume's down here. Pardon me for a second. Let me get this over here. Gosh, hanging up guitars like this is always scary. Dropping one on YouTube Live is probably not going to be a fun thing to witness. <laughs> All right, so this is an old song. I haven't played this in a while. I had to kind of brush up on it today and see if I could play it still. So I'm just going to kind of wing it. I kind of did a little remix of it. This is... Uh, a Majesty um, Artisan series, uh, it's the Moroni, and it's a six string tuned down to C sharp standard. So let's see what I can do with this um, in an older song here. Uh, let me find it, the quickening. All right, let me do a couple riffs and make sure I'm good to go and we'll, we'll start the song. <laughs> Okay, I got to tune real quick. This guitar has been, I haven't played this thing in months, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, this thing's been sitting in the, my vault for a couple of months here. All right, here we go.
Okay, so I think I proved, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some examples here um, why the overdrive is so important. No matter what amp that you use, um, of course, there's exceptions here and there. But I did some harmonic things. I did some tight, chunky, kind of fast uh, riffs in there, and without the overdrive. Um, the amp sounds amazing and the tone isn't the issue, it's the tightness that, that could be the issue sometimes. And with the overdrive, all that stuff really pinged out really well, especially those little harmonics that I was doing, the little, you know, all that stuff on the strings. All that stuff stood out in the mix, you know. Um, and uh, I'll give you some examples now. I'll play a couple of the riffs that I did in the song without the overdrive and then I'll click it back on and show you okay so one second first is going to be without second will be with Yeah, I mean, the amp by itself is actually much tighter than a lot of the other amps out there, but still that extra little nudge that the overdrive gives it, especially in a mix situation, really makes all that stuff stand out. I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble of writing those types of riffs and putting those types of accents in your song and then performing them and perfecting them so you can perform them, why not have a pedal push all that stuff um, in, in a way where it all stands out? You know, otherwise you're up there, you might as well be miming stuff and no one can tell what you're doing anyway. So that's why I use it. It really is. It doesn't help me play better. It just helps what I play be heard better. So that's what it is. Um, what vocal effects do you use in your band, Growlrex says? I mean, uh, basically just some delay. You know, I mean, in the studio you compress. Um, but uh, typically when we, when we play live, we just put a little delay on carry. And that's who you heard was Carrie in there. Um, Warm Chord, thanks for the super chat. Really appreciate that very much. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. I mean, just just some delay. I'm not a big fan of uh, big reverb on vocals because it, it just swallows everything up. So like an 850 second millisecond delay, you know, live just to set for like a set and forget. That's kind of what we go for. Like three repeats, just low in the mix, just enough to give it some space, you know. Um, a lot of times the singers, when they pull out of their notes, you want to hear a little bit of after afterglow, <laughs> and it just helps helps uh, singers um, not have to sing everything so long, and it actually just it makes it sound better. It's just like guitar solos. That's why we all use delay on our guitar solos. It gives us that really nice you know effect. So um, let's see here, killer vocals. Uh, uh, Jay says from Warm Chord, no thanks, Yeah, that's Carrie, you know, she's an amazing singer, so she she wrote all the lyrics and the vocal melodies for that song, and she killed it, um, she did a great job. Um, let's see here, uh, Cool Tune MK says, thanks man, really appreciate that, that's an oldie, I wrote that, the music for that, like, several years ago, and uh, my old band Rain, and we still play it in Anastasi, because it's just such a great song, and, uh, you know, it's about 11 minutes long. <laughs> That's why I condensed it down for uh, this particular, you know, night. So I could just use parts of songs. And the thing is, is when you want to hear this stuff in a mix, why not hear it with vocals too? Because that's really a full mix, right? So I wanted to make sure that all those accents and all those things stood out, even while there's vocals going on and stuff like that too. And keep in mind too, like... I'm single tracking here, not double tracking. So even with the single track, because there's no other guitar tracks going on. 
I don't do that. It's an empty, you know, it's an empty song. There's no guitars there. The only time, time there's guitars on my mixes when I play on this channel is when there's guitars behind a guitar solo. That's it, you know. Other than that, you know, that's how that's how we do it here. Um, that sounds sick, Phoenix says. Thanks, man. Seriously, I really appreciate that. We worked really hard on that song. So, um, Jason, uh, Bell, Bell, sorry, Bellu, sorry, if I, I, got, I don't have my glasses on. C-sharp standard. That works really well. That amp sounds really good. Thank you. Yeah, I love the C-sharp standard tuning on this guitar. Um, six strings just sound better when you drop them down quite a bit. It's got a bridge cables on it. It's got 11 thicks, 11 heavies on it. Um, and, man, this thing just it just sounds amazing. Um, I don't like six strings that are tuned, tuned, tuned standard. To me, they just sound too, too high-pitched. Um, for at least for what I do and that's why I'm using all these different tunings so I can show you how this amp sounds no matter what tuning you use or what kind of woods that you use this amp really does do the modern stuff very well so don't be afraid to buy this amp if you're like well you know I, I you know, how's it sound on drop guitars drop guitar sounds freaking killer you know um, so let me speaking of drop guitars let me get my other dropped guitar and uh, this one's way down. This is like a whole step down, but dropped two steps down on the B string. So it's dropped down to like G sharp or something. And we're going to go ahead and do another mix with that. And then uh, I'll switch back to my standard guitar. And then we'll just turn the knobs and have some fun. And I'll just be your monkey boy. Whatever you guys want me to do with the amp, I'll do it. We'll set everything at noon. We'll check the, how much gain this has. With and without overdrive, we'll hear the mid push, all that stuff. So um, bear with me one second on this guitar change. <clears throat> this is the most nerve wracking part because I don't want to scratch one of my guitars. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to have um, a show very soon on here. I had a night of mini amps, Battle of the Mini Amps, uh, which was really good. It was a successful show. People really liked it. And I'm going to have Night of the Titans very soon. And that KSR behind me there is going to be on that show. Boy, you want to talk about a beast of an amp. Holy crap, that thing is nice. That's a great amp. Um, yeah, the KSRs, I've, I've heard so many good things about them, but I never played one until recently. And... Uh, I fell in love with that thing immediately. That's a killer freaking amp. Let me do a couple riffs on here and then I'll start the song.
That was another one of our songs from Anastasi, uh, Carrie on vocals again, Reno on bass. Um, that was called While I Bleed, and uh, yeah, I just did like a quick little segment on that, including the guitar solo. So yeah, I mean, it supported everything that I did, uh, no matter what tuning I was in. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it stood out in the mix just right. I mean, this guitar sounds a lot different than the other ones because this is mostly maple. The, the neck is roasted maple, so it's a little spankier, but it still had that thick, really nice thick tone to it. So, yeah, very versatile amp. Some people say, oh, the angles are very pigeonholed. They're only good for certain kinds of music. I disagree. I think that um, they might they might be uh, better than other amps in, in, like, the heavier, darker stuff. Like the, the, you know, like the, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, European type stuff. But they still sound really good in the stuff that, you know, you know that I played. I thought it sounded great. Dave Seymour's band is not European. They're here in Michigan, and they sound amazing, and it sounds great in their music. So it's like, if, if I think that it all comes down to how you write, how you play, and how you um, wield the power and the tone and the amp. And if you know how to do that, I think that you can really make it work for you. I really do. And this amp is, is amazing. It really is. Um, let me switch back to my standard tune guitar, read a few comments, and then we're going to go over the different tone options that this has. And then we'll go ahead and switch to this guy. I'll do a couple mixes in that. We'll, and we'll call it a night. So, uh, yeah, just one second here. Let me uh, take this off. Talk amongst yourselves. Again, I really appreciate you guys being here tonight. It means a lot to me. It really does. Um, you know, when you put a whole day into doing a show like this, and you hope people show up, you know, because it's a lot of work. And when people do, it, it really does mean a lot. I, I seriously, sincerely appreciate it very much. And ask as many questions as you want. Make as many comments as you want because that's what this is about. Here's your chance. That's why I call them live interactive demos because it's your chance to be like, do this, do that. How, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Let's all hear this together. And, you know, um, and it just gives you a chance to really, you know, kick the tires on an amplifier that maybe you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So um, let me catch up to some comments here. Uh Oh, uh, Phoenix Rise 1. Oh, yeah, I have a question. How do you set your precision drive? Uh, good question. It's a very versatile pedal. So with this amp, I actually have um, the tight knob up one notch. So it's all, you know, you got it all the way down on the angle. Since it's a pretty tight amp by itself, I just went up one notch. You can go up two, but it's almost it almost cuts too much bass out, in my opinion. So it depends on your guitar and your pickups and all that. But for what I've got, I got going on here, one notch up, and I have the volume at like one o'clock. The tone is just under noon, and the gain or the drive is, you know, like right here is like all the way, you know, it's at six o'clock, so all the way down. I got it just up a hair, and again, it's because I paid for it. I'm going to use it. So <coughs> that's what I have. Um, uh, let's hear the MT15. Uh, I had to play mine today, Gravel Rock says. Oh, yeah, we'll hear it, man. And <laughs> we'll definitely hear that for sure. I know we talked uh, this before, but if you haven't tried one yet, get a Digitech Drop Tune pedal. Got it right here. Uh, you can't see it, but it's I uh, got it right here. Honestly, um, I think it's a great pedal for, like, when you're on tour and you're playing out and stuff and you don't want to bring 20 guitars, you know. Um, but in the studio, I always prefer to, go, to um, use um, uh, a, the guitar tuned actually to that setting because uh, when I was in the studio last time, Mick Maslowski, our, our engineer for the songs that you're listening to, um, you know, the ones with the vocals anyways, um, uh, I noticed that the, the drop pedal was rounding off some of my high end and it was noticeable and he had to add it back in, which you can fix. But you don't notice it as much as the high gain stuff, but it's still there. And after a while, you can kind of feel the latency. It's just a hair off. But, I mean, I think for most guys, it's, like, not a big deal. But for me, I just wanted everything to be, like, 100% legit in the studio. And I have multiple guitars, so I figured, well, I might as well just tune them all to the proper thing. And I don't have to worry about it. But I keep the pedal on the board just in case one of my guitars 
breaks a string or whatever and I need I need it to drop tune for a song so that's why I use it um, it's like a spare tire for me you know um, hey Carrie what's going on I hope you're enjoying your own vocals tonight <laughs> um, what about the Bogner OS 2, 2x12 I, I haven't played one of those yet um, yeah good question but I haven't played one yet uh, great tones. Maybe I need a Mesa 212 gravel rock says, dude, I'm telling you, like I played, um, just recently, I haven't played a four by 12 in a long time. And I was at a friend of mine's house and I played through his four by 12 and it's a great cabinet. It really is. But I found that they're a little too wolfy for me. They're just a little too airy. And I like the two twelves because they're very punchy, but they're not that they're not so overly focused though. Like, I don't want you to think like, if you go with the 2x12, it's going to be a narrow, focused uh, cabinet. It's not. It still sounds really big. It's just more punchier than a 412. It, it, the 412 is really airy. It's kind of woofy and airy, um, which, depending on what you like, I mean, it would work for you, but the 212s are perfect for me. I don't want to go anywhere else now. The 212s sound absolutely incredible. I love the punch. I love the dynamics. Um, I just found that I can hear everything that I'm doing better, and the articulation in the 212s is so much better. Um, it's amazing. I think your cab is 70% of your sound. I really do. I think it's more important than the amp, because if you, you could take a killer amp and put it through a crappy cab, and your tone's going to suck. But you could take an okay amp and put it through an awesome cab, and your tone's going to be really good. But if you, yeah, obviously, if you take two really good things and put them together, it's the best of both worlds. But um, the cab's the more important thing. It honestly is. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, let's see, Dave Buckner says, setting suggestions when you start tweaking gain at minus six, seven base at minus six mids dimed treble at nine depth off mid boost on presence at yeah i will try to remember that i'll refer back to this thank you I, i'll definitely honor your request there um carrie just got here haven't heard myself yet <laughs> well uh i might be able to do another mix with you in it um we'll have to see how things go here all right so let's set everything at noon on this amp I'm going to turn all the extra stuff off, so the bright switch is off, the bottom switch is off, um, mid boost, oh, I had the mid boost on this whole time, well, isn't that interesting, um, so let's set everything at noon, and see what it sounds like here, um, gain is at noon now, I just bumped it up to noon, I'm going to turn the overdrive off, and then I'll play a few riffs and I'll turn it back on. One second. It's pretty stinking tight without the overdrive. It really is. But again, I like it. It just sounds and feels better with it. But yeah, it, it's great. It, it really is. This is probably one of the tighter amps that I've played, really. Um, okay, so let me do uh, same settings. I'm going to keep everything the same. And I'm going to turn the bright switch on and off. And then I'm going to do the, uh, the um, bottom switch on and off. Then I'm going to do the mid boost on and off, okay? So bright switch, bottom, and mid boost. And the overdrive will be on, okay? So here we go.
Okay, some of that stuff's pretty subtle, but it does make a difference. It really does. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you turn a bright switch on, you don't want it to rip your face off. You just want it to add a subtle amount of top end, and that's exactly what it does. It gives you a proper, appropriate amount of top end, bottom end, and middle. Um, and like uh, what Dave Seymour was telling me earlier today, he's like, that mid boost is great because if another guitar player shows up to band practice, you just do that, you just turn that on, and you're not cranking your amp. All you're doing is just giving yourself uh, a little bit more of a better seat, you know, uh, but without killing everybody else. It just makes your sound stand out, but you're not drowning out the other guy, but now you can hear both of you, you know, so... That's kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to turn the gain back. Uh, let's let's go through the gain. I'm going to turn the gain all the way down and turn it up one notch at a time until we get all the way to the top. I'm going to do it without the overdrive, and I'll do the same thing with the overdrive. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to turn the overdrive on and do the same thing again. Here we go. This thing's got plenty of gain on tap. And that's the nice thing with the overdrive as well, is I had the gain at 9 o'clock, and it literally was like a great rhythm tone. You know, you could easily use that for a good, a good rhythm tone um, with the overdrive on. And it uh, just had more rage. It had more push and better feel and more response with the overdrive than it did without. So if you want to save on gain and you want a really tight, uh, percussive, um, clean, but but really just gnarly, uh, you know, uh, rhythm channel, use an overdrive and turn the gain down, and you're going to find that you're really going to like that a lot. Um, let me go back to um, the, the uh, settings suggestion here. Uh, 
Oh, Sean's got to go. Uh, hey, thanks for stopping by, dude. I'm sure you'll enjoy the rewatch. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Uh, let me see here. Um, here it is. Okay, setting suggestions for when you start tweaking. Gain at 6 to 7. Okay. Um, let's just go at 1 o'clock, which is 6, okay, I think. Um, and then uh, base at 6, all right, so that's 1 o'clock I'm taking it, maybe. Um, mids dimed, all right, so let's just turn the mids all the way up. And treble at 9, depth off. So treble at 9 o'clock, I guess. I hope I'm reading you right here. All right, so the bright and the bottom are off. All right, let's see how this sounds. And I think you said presence at 6. Okay. Oh, mid boost on. All right, so the mid boost is on. All right, let's see what this sounds like. I'll do it without the overdrive first, and I'll do it with the overdrive after that. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds good to my ears. Yeah, those are pretty good settings, you know. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty freaking good. So, yeah, I mean, we'll set it. I'm going to set it back to, like, kind of how I had it dialed in earlier. So I'm going to turn the mids to here. Treble. Dead nut center. Back to presence down a hair. And I'm going to put the gain at 11 o'clock. And I'm going to turn the bright switch on, the bottom switch on. Mid boost off. Let's see how that compares. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, that also sounds really freaking good. I mean, this amp has a lot of tonal options on it. And even when you do the extreme adjustments on it, it still sounds really good. So, yeah, I mean, the sweet spot on this amp is depending, is, I think it's whatever you like. You know, I mean, we did some pretty extreme uh, settings there, and it still sounded really good. So, yeah, I, I highly recommend this amp. If you want something unique and you want something really different that's going to uh, make you stand out and be very responsive, percussive, pretty pretty damn tight on its own um i think that's a great place to go you know like i said motor city's got two left and they're on closeout um so i would i would go on their website and look these up because uh that's a they got a really good deal on these right now so i would highly suggest uh getting one you know like i said if you want to sound unique and Dave's one of the best guitar players I know in this area, and uh, he plays one, and he sounds amazing on it. So, you know, that says a lot for it as well. Um, so let's see here, before I move on to the other amp, um, Jason says, dang, so it just sounds awesome no matter what you do. <laughs> There's a lot of cool voices in there. No, you're right, dude. I mean, no matter what you do with this thing, I mean, it's... <laughs> I love the fact that it's got powerful, but at the same time, subtle settings on it. So you can crank things on it, and they do really good things for the voicing, but they don't overpower the amp so much that it's unusable in that setting. It's, it's really up to your taste, you know? So I really think that that's awesome. Um, 
Okay, so treble at 3 o'clock, Dave said. All right, so treble at 3. Um, yeah, lots of chunk. All right, so let's do the treble at 3. Um, Carrie, yes, I did mention the in-ears, the KZ. KZ AS10s, uh, scroll down in the description here, and you'll see them on there. And like I said, you can hear exactly what I'm hearing, so we can all be on the same page. So go get those. They're very affordable, and they sound amazing. So... Um, let me, let's try the treble at, at three o'clock. One second. That's pretty bright, but it's not horrible, you know. It's it's definitely pretty pretty bright, uh, but yeah, I mean, depending on your situation and what you got going on in your band, you know, that's a that could be a decent setting for you. It's a little bright for my taste, but everybody's different, you know. So, um, so let's uh, let's do this. Let me put this uh, unless there's any other requests that I do with this here. Uh, what are you looking forward to, Nam? John says. Uh, good question. Uh, I'm looking forward to the the big brother of this guy, the MT100, um, and the uh, the Rev uh, uh, G20. I want that uh, bad on the show, and we'll have both on the show. Um, and Synergy should be releasing some new modules, uh, so I'm looking forward to those. And um, the Kemper Cab, which I, I'm looking forward to. And Line 6 has some top secret stuff that they're releasing too, so I'm looking forward to see what that is. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember the other stuff I was looking forward to. I can't even remember now. Um, everybody's talking about that Nero thing. Um, that's not going to be out till well, fall. Um, I'll review it. I'll probably have it on the show for a fight night and I'm looking forward to that, but I won't buy one only because I got, I, I got, I'm swimming in gear. So, um, buying a new digital platform for me is just, it just doesn't make sense. I have a Kemper, I have a Helix right here that I'm using for all the effects and switching for all my amps. And it's a perfect product for that. I can't imagine anything that would operate any better, be more flexible than that is for that use and then the Kemper for all-in-one kind of great tones and amp uh, options and stuff I just love that I just can't see something beating that I mean again I'm open-minded but I just don't see a reason to buy any other digital platforms at this at this time it's something would have to be absolutely amazing for me to buy it and I just don't see that happening um, not to say that the neural thing isn't going to be great I just it just to me, at best, it would be a lateral move, and you know what they say about lateral moves, you know, it's actually a move down, so there's no reason for me to get that, um, but I will have it on the channel for a review, because why not? Um, yeah, the Rev Carry says, yeah, I can't wait to uh, to uh, get get a hold of that. I think that's going to be, that's Carrie's favorite amp. <laughs> all right, so, all right, I'm going to... Uh, Put this on standby and uh, let it cool down for a second here, and then I'm going to turn it off. So that was the Engel Fireball 100. Um, thank you, Motor City, for letting me have this on the show and letting me borrow it for the week, uh, and, and I'll, I'll have it back tomorrow. Um, but I'm very impressed with the amp. Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's really, really good. Um, and again, if you want to stand out and have your own kind of custom tone, it's a great option for you. It really is. And I'm just so grateful that I'm, uh, able to check out all these amps because, uh, they all have their own characteristics. And again, the amp picks you like whatever amp you vibe with the best, that's the one you should use. It really is. Um, 
So let me uh, let me do this. Let me uh, hang this guy up here and make sure this doesn't fall out. And I gotta switch some cables around. And we will check out this amp. That's why I label all my cables. So it just makes things easier for me. And uh, took all this stuff up here. tie this on so that there's no stress on the cables. A little trick Jamie Trevino taught me. All right, make sure it's all hooked up. Got the, yep, that in there, that in there. Fire that up. Okay. Guys, I'll be right back. Give me one second, okay? Just gotta grab something. Hi, this is Carrie from Tone Wars. We're gonna go live in just a few minutes, but before we do, I just wanted to take a few seconds to say a few things. Jared and I really appreciate when you guys tune in and interact with us when we go live. We work very hard to make sure that our live streams and our produced videos are educational and entertaining for everyone. Believe it or not, there's a lot of work that goes into our live streams and our produced videos. So if you like what you're experiencing here, here's a couple ways you can help us out. The Super Chat feature is turned on and any amount will be appreciated. Jared is also available for private consultation for a nominal fee. You can contact Jared through two of the links below. One is through our Tone Wars Facebook page and the other is through email. So thank you so much for your support. The live stream's about ready to start, so go pour yourself your favorite glass of whiskey or other libation and we'll be right with you. Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to Tone Wars. Wars. Okay, I'm back. I figured instead of uh, having you stare at an empty chair, I would just play that little intro again for you. Okay, so here we are with the uh, PRS MT-15. Let's hear what this guy sounds like real quick. I'll just play a couple stupid riffs on it and then I'll play a couple mixes and we'll talk about that real quick. Still love it. It's amazing, you know. Like, uh, I like I said before, I have a lot of gear, and this is one of the newer pieces of gear that I bought. I bought it, uh, I don't know, a month ago, and I reviewed it, and I loved it so much. When I brought it back to the store, like for three days, it haunted my dreams, and I was like, I, I just got to go back and buy it. And I went back and traded in a guitar and paid a little extra money and bought it and brought it home, and I was like, this thing's amazing. And it's always on the back of your mind, right? You, I, especially for me, because I'm bringing all these huge, monstrous amps here and getting in the room, and even in my in-ears and in the room without them, I, I'm getting the feel of the amp in the room feel. And uh, it always, you know, crosses my mind, like, 
what if I, when I go back to playing this or my other, th pro you know, things that I have, if I don't like it anymore because, um, like this or the other big amps that I have in here blew it away. And I have to tell you, it hasn't happened yet. I'm not saying that this is better than that or that's better than this, but no matter what I bring here, when I plug back into the MT-15, I still love it just as much as I did the day I played it. Um, and the day I brought it home and was like blown away with it. I'm still very pleased with it and like I said before like the amp picks the player I gel with this amp better than any other amp that I've ever played so far a lot of the amps that I have here are amazing and I love all of them so far I've, I've thought every one of them was very good but for something some reason with this one every time I play through it I'm super pleased with the chewy kind of aggressive um, grainy gritty type uh, of gain that it has and the tone of it is just amazing especially when you do leads there's no pointy notes coming out they're just very smooth and glassy and but it still stands out in a mix really well and when you push it with an overdrive like I've, I'm doing tonight um, the settings I use on this amp it, it just sounds amazing by the way so the settings I'm using on my overdrive which is a precision drive by Horizon Devices on this amp is I got the volume, or I have the tight knob two notches up, so it's like 11 o'clock. Volume is at like, you know, 1 o'clock. Tone is dead nut center, and then I, the, the gain is 7 o'clock still. I haven't done much different with that. So that's pretty much it, you know. And with the Helix, I can switch it. See how it goes to the clean channel? And that's done through snapshots on the Helix. That's so cool. You know, that's, if, if you don't have a Helix... Um, for your live rig for effects and switching, you're really missing out because the Helix, in my opinion, is the best four cable method product out there, bar none, you know. Very flexible. There's pretty much nothing it can't do in that regard. So, all right, so let's do, uh, let's do two mixes with the uh, PRS MT-15. And uh, let's see what's what with that. Um, let's go back to... The old standard one here, let me mute the mic and we are off to the races.
yeah, still like it just as much. Flubbed a couple parts there, but whatever. Um, yeah, I like it just as much. I think it sounds and feels great. So, um, you know, and, and the reason why I did this comparison is, again, a lot of people ask me afterwards in the comments. Uh, they'll message me on Facebook or ask me in the comments, like, well, how does it compare to the MT-15? Um, I think they're both great choices, and I'm, I'm honestly not trying to be politically correct here and be all PC and nice. I'm not. I'm just giving you, like, my honest opinion. Um, this one, the PT-15, is a little more suitable for me, like I said before, the amp picks you, you know, and I just find that my interaction between myself my guitars, my picks, my gear, and all that, and this amplifier. I just love how this thing feels. Um, I love how it sounds. It just really fits me so well. You know, it's that great, you know, you put on a nice suit, and it just fits. It's like tailored, and I really feel like this amp is tailored for my playing and my style and what I like and, and, and everything. I, I could easily, obviously I proved it tonight earlier, I could easily play all the same songs with this guy, and I, I absolutely think that the the Angle Fireball 100 is an amazing, amazing amplifier. Um, this one suits my taste a little more, but it doesn't mean it's better than this, honestly. it's. But I think if you went to Motor City Guitar and bought either one of these, you would be super happy. Um, this is obviously less money, it's about half the price, um, and it doesn't sound like a 15-watt a amp. In fact, somebody on YouTube just um, rated the power on it at 24.8 watts. So it's pretty much a 25-watt amplifier. Um, and I'll tell you, it sounds huge, and it feels amazing, and it's got great tone. And um, it, I, when you push it with an overdrive, it's absolutely stunning. You know, it's just a great, great amplifier. So, like I said, um, I, I just wanted to do this comparison for you guys because a lot of, like I said I wanted to answer that question you know do I like it better I just think it suits my taste and my playing better but again this thing's killer it's such a great amp I would definitely have this um, um, if I had extra money to spend I would definitely buy this and have it part of my rotation of amplifiers that I like to play through it's definitely worth uh, having for sure you know um, let me read some comments before we close the night out here. Um, let's see here. Let me scroll back. And I'm sorry if I miss anybody's comments. I'm playing and trying to keep track of everything here and find out where I left off. It's hard to do. John Claude, so glad to see you here, buddy. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, Dave Rebell, what's happening, man? Um, I use Randall Lynchbox, Dave Seymour says, 4x12 and Eminence, and Eminence uh, Super V's with that amp. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. That's a great, whatever you're doing, Dave, uh, keep doing it because it sounds incredible. <laughs> um, Gravel Rock says, I have many cabs, but the most recent one I got was the Harley Benton 212. Yeah, I have one of those too. It's amazing with the v vintage 30s, and I know the Mesa V30s are UK voiced a little different yeah the the maces are a little brighter um they uh, but they're both great cabs i mean fantastic cabs um loads of chunk john uh claudio says yeah the chunk on both of these amps is just it and again it's the amp but it's also the overdrive interacting with that amp that's how you get all that chunk i mean the amp itself will give you a lot of great tone but when you sculpt the tone with a great overdrive pedal, you get that chunkiness, and it really does give you that thick, rich uh, tone. You know, um, it's the gravy on the taters, man. Uh, the MT-15 is going to eat the angle alive. And <laughs> I mean, they're both, like I said, they're both great amps. Honestly, you could go either way. Um, uh, I will say that in the room... Uh, without my in-ears in, the this thing did sound a little bigger, but it, it didn't overshadow this in such a way where it was like, oh, that thing sounds so puny now. I mean, it's, it's got more tubes. It's, you know, it's it, more watts. I mean, it, it better sound bigger, right? But the thing still has a very respectable uh, showing, uh, uh, you know, against every amp I've had in here so far. It's just It's just great. So, again, buy either one. I think uh, whatever suits your taste... Um, 
Uh, I can't imagine Dave Seymour play through anything else. I just think that him through a a uh, angle, uh, whether it's a savage or a fireball or powerball, whatever. I just think that that's Dave's jam. I think Dave just belongs in angle land, and he just knows how to wield the, that tone and make it work for him so well. So, um, let's see. Let me catch up to you guys here. Saw Buckethead bring down the house with one of them. Uh, with one of what? The Engel or the MT-15? I'm curious. Um, KSR, Rev, MI Audio, Driftwood, Friedman, Randall, Engel, Herbert, EVH. <laughs> Which is the most aggressive, uh, Tony asked. Um, I haven't played a Driftwood. I would say out of the ones that you're mentioning here, probably the angles, the angles very aggressive. I think that that's probably the most unruly, and I mean that as a compliment, unruly just savage amplifier. It's just a freaking beast. So aggression, angle, it's got more electricity around it, like the tone. It's just sparking with electricity. Um, this is a little darker and more refined. Um, the KSR behind me, if if you like Soldanos, but you want a Soldano that's got a little more kick to it, the KSR, you know, it's a killer amp. Um, uh, let's see here, <laughs> Berserker Land Studios. I <laughs> show up and Jared leaves. Yeah, I just had to get rid of some of the whiskey I was drinking earlier. <laughs> um, Rev has two aggression levels on the amp. Uh, Warm Chord Music says, yeah, that that Rev is killer. Um, it's a great amp. Um, let's see here. Dave Bell, I bet you're going to grab that fresh glass of 40 Creek Rye. Um, <laughs> oh, this is all when I was gone. Uh, let's see here. I've owned a Friedman JJ and my rev stayed. No competition on that one. Warm Core Music says, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Friedman stuff, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, F Dave Friedman's a genius. He makes great stuff. There's no doubting of that. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a great uh, amp maker, and it's all handmade, and great parts, and, and the qualities and craftsmanship is amazing. But that amp doesn't choose me very well. It, every time I try to play through one of, one of those amplifiers, it just doesn't work for me and the riffs that I play and the type of music and style and all that stuff. It just doesn't work for me. I'm not saying I don't like them. I just, you know, I would prefer either one of these two over any Friedman amp that I've played so far. And from what I hear, Friedman's are those kind of amps where it's like you either like them or you don't, you know. Um, and I've played through a lot of them and I find them, again, I think the quality's great. They're just not my taste, you know. Um... Dave Verbell, that MT-15 is killer. Oh, it really is. I love this freaking amp. I Honestly, it's it's such an affordable amp. I suggest anybody watching this live stream right now, go get one. They're amazing amplifiers. You will not regret getting one of these. I have yet to meet anybody that bought this amplifier that said, yeah, it's a turd. It's not. It's amazing. It, it really is killer. And there's tons of tonal opportunities on this, too. Uh, let me show you the clean channel really quick. The clean channel on this thing is freaking gorgeous. One second. How do you go wrong with that? And it's got a little bit of chorus and delay on it, but I mean, it just sounds amazing. You know, it's got two 100% usable channels on it. So that's what I like. That's what I like about it too. Is that you know you don't have to worry about like, well, it's only got one channel that I like. I mean, you can use both channels on this amp and be completely satisfied. 100%. You know, and for 750 or whatever it goes for. It's a freaking steal. You can't go wrong with this amp. Um, uh, great playing, Carrie says. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate it. Um, 
MT15 is hard to beat at its price, uh, Dave Buckner says, uh, among new amps. No, you're right. It really, it really is hard to beat, you know. Um, it's just a fantastic amp. And I'm just lucky. I'm lucky to have two really good amps here tonight so I could show you guys. And it's been, it's been an absolute privilege to play through this angle for the last couple days. And I'm going to miss this thing when I bring it back to Motor City tomorrow. I really am. I think that... Uh, um, this thing is just absolutely amazing. It really is. So if you guys are looking for an amp that's, that's, it's kind of quirky, but in a good way, it's got its own stuff going on. That's your, that's your guy right there. It's an amazing, amazing amp. Um, okay. Let's see here. Dave Seymour, there's a Bogner at, oh, <laughs> at Guitar Center. <laughs> You're gassing, aren't you, man? You <laughs> Astronaut of Bohemia. What's up, man? Good to see you here. Um, what's your signal path? All right, uh, signal path is I'm going from the guitar through the Helix via four cable method. The only thing the Helix is doing is giving me effects and channel switching. So you're not hearing the Helix. You're just hearing the amplifiers. The amplifier is hooked to a Mesa 212 with vintage 30s in it. And the, uh, the microphone I'm using tonight is the Sennheiser E609. It's going into a mixing console, out to an interface, out to you guys. So there's no EQs or anything on any of this stuff. Everything's flat. I don't EQ my stuff because I want it to be raw and real. So, um, uh, Jim, Jeremy Connor, nice amp. I want to hear that KS... The loop crappy on the MT15. No, the loop's amazing. The loop is is awesome. It's a it's a great great uh, loop. It works perfectly. I've have had no issues with it at all. Oh, you want to hear the KSR? Um, I will have that on soon. I will have it on Night of the Titans. I'm going to bring a lot of really cool amps here, and I'm just going to go through each one of them and play them through a mix for you guys, just like I did with mini amps. I'm going to do it with all the big suckers, and the KSR will be here for that um and man i love that amp it is super good super nice amp um gravel rocks everyone add motor city to your facebook and order online no seriously you're right i mean motor city guitar is an awesome store it's my favorite store to shop at i go there all the time great staff they got stuff stacked to the rafters in there they got everything and they got great prices and lots of variety and good customer service. So definitely go there and get some stuff. Um, uh, Jeremy, thanks. Love the channel. Hey, man, love you guys too. It's my pleasure doing this. I'm honored that you're here. I really appreciate you guys being here with me. Um, Carrie's got to go to bed. Good episode. Good night, Carrie. <laughs> Chicago Todd, sounds like M15 is the... Raining champ, he says, <laughs> it's a great amp. What's up, uh, Chicago Todd? Good to see you. Yeah, it's a great amp. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this episode back and compare the two. But like I said, I think they're both great. You know, it's just a, they're just two different things. And it's and honestly, amplifiers, it's all a matter of taste, right? I mean, whatever works for you. Um, you know, and uh, and honestly, it's it's the riffs that you play, the type of music that you play that can make an amp too because i i play through guy friends of mine they, they have you know they'll come over and bring their rig over and they sound incredible through it and i play through it and i make it sound like a hello kitty rig you know because my riffs just don't match with their with what they got very well but their riffs do and it's just it just yeah i use this as an example all the time and i'll close with this you know uh one guy's got a ferrari and the other guy's got a jeep and they switch vehicles and they get back to each other and they go, I don't like your vehicle, you know. Well, the, and the guy that took the Ferrari out says, well, I don't like it because when I took it out on the trail, it kept getting stuck. And the guy in the Jeep said, well, you know, that borrowed the Jeep. He said, I didn't like the Jeep because it didn't corner very well when I took it around all these uh, hairpin turns and stuff when I was going really fast. It all depends on how you use it, right? So if you take the Jeep out in the trail, you're going to love it. If you take the Ferrari on the Autobahn or like some really hairpin turns and go really fast and do some drifting with it, it's going to be amazing. So it's not the car's fault. Uh, it's just basically, it's just, it's actually, it's nobody's fault. It's just how you use it um, and how your style of playing is really does affect how the tone of the amp really is. 
and it has to match your playing and vice versa. So, well, again, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, I'm honored to have you here. And I do this every Wednesday night. Next Wednesday, I don't know what I'm going to have, but keep, take a peek at my community section of my channel. And I'll post a picture of what it's going to be uh, as soon as I figure out uh, what I want to do. And, um, you know, and Carrie and I will be live on Sunday night at 7. And I look forward to seeing you all then. So thank you very much for watching. God bless everybody. I appreciate you more than uh, I can say. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And we will see you next time. Thank you very much, guys. All, all you have a good night, okay?